Uh, hey, Scott, you and me a blast to link out and in our group. Uh, all right. We are now live on the Twitchers YouTube channel. As always, guys, this is an amazing Fortunes of Reselling show. You guys have seen this. You guys are no stranger to this. Um, every Sunday, we have a really cool amount of people that's on the uh, that's on our panel, and we go through and talk about reselling life in general. Everything that you guys need to know, we talk about on this show. So let me say hello, a couple people in chat. I'm just joking. We got way too much to, to, to go over today, but I see everybody in chat. What's going on, guys? So tonight's show is all about reselling platforms, and we also have the amazing owner of Prairie Grid in here, which is another really friendly site for resellers to sell on and we're gonna we're gonna blast him with a lot of questions and also um, answer your guys's questions what's going on flipping good stuff if you guys notice it is a pg area here but i have uh i have my new area now my new warehouse guys my new warehouse is in the house tonight so i'm excited to do the first show in the new warehouse and before we last thing before we get going uh those of you who i met last night was last night yes last night in our amazing event it we crushed it there was like 50 55 people there it was huge it was huge so guys if i if i saw you there i really appreciate you guys um it was an amazing time so i'm gonna go through the panel um in order uh screw it we're gonna let the lady go first because she's the only one on the panel jason go ahead i'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm jo uh, guys okay what Lord, hey, go I'm gonna get you back. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren. Hot Chic Thrift is my YouTube channel and my Instagram handle. And I sell everything, but mostly clothing. And the most I sell on is probably Poshmark and eBay, but I also do local sales and Mercari. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, sorry. Um, let's go to Jason. No, let's go to Scott first. He's actually first. Sorry, Jason. Hey, the bearded picker here. I'm the bearded picker everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I sell uh, eBay, eBay and Amazon, mainly Amazon. Uh, I used to ride around all over the country in my van, but uh, as the wife is currently beating uh, breast cancer, I will resume that on the other side of the summer, but for those of you who hadn't watched your video, I'm just like, over the over the top thrill that uh, there's no met metabolic function with the cancer tumor, and they're moving forward with the surgery in about four weeks. Guys, Thank you for all your prayers. Can we get some love and chat for uh, Scott's wife? She's not watching probably, but man, that is amazing. Um, I can only imagine. That's really cool. I I was super excited, so I left uh, I left Scott a, a really awkward message on uh, Facebook. <laughs> And uh, really, really cool. Really cool. Um, all right. So let's go to Jay. I mean, Shane, go ahead. What is up, everybody? It's Shane, the Rising Grand Picker. And uh, if you don't know me, uh, I do Amazon and eBay. Uh, also, just started selling on Prairie Grit and uh, imported all those listings over. So happy to add a platform and uh, do a bunch of retail arbitrage. And yeah, that's me. So. All right, you get, I'm going to let you hand over whoever you want now. It's not Jason. Awesome. So let's introduce Mr. Sean Herrick. Uh, he is the owner of Prairie Grit, and I just want him to tell his a little bit of his background and his story and uh, why he chose to invent Prairie Grit. Sure. Uh, thanks for the introduction, and uh, thanks, everybody, for inviting me to this show. Um. I think I learned about you guys' show last week, and it is pretty impressive. I didn't know that there were actually people out there doing things like this, so I guess I've been buried um, in a dark cave somewhere building a website. Um, so essentially, yeah, my name is Sean Herrick, and I've been flipping antiques and collectibles and basically anything I can make money on um, on eBay for roughly uh, eight years. Um, I've been in e-commerce, so like that was like my part-time gig. Um, I've been in e-commerce for um, about a decade, and uh, the website that or the company I worked for when I left the company was about a two hundred and fifty million dollar company. And uh, so, at any rate, um, and it was a, a strictly e-commerce platform. It wasn't a marketplace or anything like that, but we just dropped ship product and that kind of thing. 
A um, little bit about my uh, about Prairie Grit and why Prairie Grit uh, is a thing. Um, essentially, um, I uh, once again I was selling on eBay for many years, and um, sorry if I'm going to get sorry if I'm going to be a little I'm gonna, probably going to be a little long winded here. Um, so apologies, Jay, and uh, anybody else who hasn't had a chance to talk. Um, I. I was selling on eBay for uh, about five years and I was selling antiques and I was trying to do antiques at a high volume. And the reason why I was selling antiques is because there's high margin and um, you know, people wanted them. And so I would flip antiques and it was hard for me to uh, do a lot of volume and call out every single flaw. And so essentially um, I had had a, a few returns that I just accepted, let the person keep, you know, let the people keep the item and ultimately um, uh, gave them their money back. Uh, you know, it just wasn't worth worth it for me to accept the return. And apparently back then, you know, eBay's noose was pretty tight on sellers. And um, I, uh, my uh, account got limited or, um, you know, I, I went from being able to sell like, I don't know, a couple thousand items down to, um, roughly a hundred or something like that. And I called eBay and I actually sat on the phone for like an hour until I could talk to like a manager at, at, you know, a customer service manager. And, um, I told the customer service manager, I was like, look, I'm just taking care of the customer. Um, I work in an e-commerce store and our big ammo, you know, our big thing is like treat people how you want to be treated. Um, we wanted to bring the human touch back to, uh, e-commerce, you know, Obviously, we're not going to see the person buying the product, but we want to make sure that they know that we're there to back them up on a sale or anything that happens. And I told her I was just taking care of my customer. I was accepting returns and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, little did I know, um, you know, at the time, if you if you had like a certain amount of returns and um, uh, during a short amount of time, um, they would ding your account and limit you. And I got limited and I, um, you know, I was just couldn't believe that a human couldn't fix that issue. And I told her, um, I'm going to, that's fine. I was frustrated at the time and said, that's fine. You guys can shut my account down or limit my account. And um, ultimately the next week um, I was in a developer's office creating Prairie Grit. Uh, the reason why is Prairie Grit is ultimate or selling flipping things was kind of like my hobby it wasn't even about the money i just loved going out searching and finding something that i could buy for like five bucks and sell for like 400. and i didn't want anybody to dictate whether or not i could do that and so i went and built prairie grit and ultimately um essentially prairie grit is a place that i want people you know i want to give people back the uh, uh the control of their business and that kind of thing and um uh, you know so sorry, the long-winded version of what you guys just said. Um, apologies. No, sorry. no worries, Sean. That was great, man. I appreciate it. That was that was totally awesome. Um, Mr. J. Craft in Howdy. the house. Bolo Rama. What is up, man? Not a lot, brother. I appreciate all of you guys for having me, uh, especially those of you who don't know who I am and don't hate me for being uh, uh, selfish and spamming my link in the comments right now. But uh, my name is Jay Craft. I run the Facebook group Ball Around with Pickers Lounge, and I'm also host of the Sunday Reseller Roundup, which is a one to two hour long Sunday show that covers e-commerce, uh, finance news, uh, just everything that's happening in the world of being a reseller, as well as practical training. And we really pride ourselves on being a fact-based hub and uh, disseminating a lot of the mistruths that people are taught, uh, especially in, in, in a world like this where, you know, uh, free advice is bad advice most times. But yeah, so we basically focus on doing that. And I'm also an affiliate manager with Prairie Grit. And uh, yeah, so if, if anyone is uh, looking to do a little bit more with the brand, don't be afraid to reach out to either myself or Sean at some point after the show. By the way, guys, he has the most amazing voice in all of YouTube. <laughs> uh, but I, I gotta, uh, we have like two people on the panel. We have Jason, who is amazing and has got a great voice. And we also have him. He's got a great sound system, so if you guys are ever curious about that. But um, all right. So – I, I, I was given a hard time to Jason, but like literally he is one of my most favorite resellers ever. Uh, really amazing guy. He's helped me out a ton with shoes. 
And um, you get what you you see with Jason, and I want to hand it over to him so he can introduce himself. Thank you, Wade. Thank you. Um, guys, my name is Jason Thrift Trader. Uh, I sell on eBay, Poshmark, uh, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, and hopefully very soon Prairie Grit. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to learn about this new platform. I'm excited to uh, uh, be a part of this journey, especially with you guys uh, uh, blasting out what Prairie Grit is all about. And I'm, uh, I'm excited to learn right along with you guys. All right, all right. So, um, uh, you know, everybody will give their kind of two cents, but um, uh, basically, it's just another way that we can sit at home in our boxers, or if you want to be at home naked, or if you want to be at home bundled up on the couch watching a movie, um, you know, whatever you want, whatever you're into, um, it's just another way, guys, that we can really sell online and make more money. And I think it's really important. We always talk about, like, if you're full time, Unless you're crushing it, let's say you're selling watches and you're doing like 100K every 60 days on eBay, then maybe that's a different story. But it's really important to possibly do like multiple platforms. You have multiple co money coming in um, unless you're just absolutely just hammering it on one like Scott is, Amazon, it seems like. But he's still on eBay. He's crushing it, right? Um, so that being said, that's kind of why we wanted to do this um, to kind of show you guys the other platforms. And that's kind of the title, reselling platforms and also – uh, Prairie Grits owners on here so you guys can go to their website. We'll put it in chat a few times and uh, so that way you guys can go check that out um, uh, Real quick five dollar super chat my man Sunday always learning. I appreciate that. Yeah, really cool YouTube channel guys go check them out Right click his name and you can go right to his YouTube channel. I think you're almost at a thousand subs could be wrong But it's an amazing channel. All right, so let's get into this um, really I love this show, but uh I, I, I need like, I need, you know, I, I'm, you know, I don't want to have to talk the whole show and I've got an amazing panel of guests. That's why I like to have this on my channel. I get a video out of this and I don't have to really do any work. It's perfect. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Scott because he's got way more awesome things to say, guys. But if you have questions, um, also, um, I would love to, uh, if you guys have like a, any Q and A's or any questions you want to ask, I would love to kind of go over like Prairie Grit and all that as well. So you guys can chime in. Uh, and maybe Jay too, but uh, I'm really interested. And I'm going to be, from what I understand, you can cross post your items from eBay to Prayer Grit, and I'm super excited to do that, especially being in the new office. I have time now. So, all right, so I'm going to hand it over to all my guests over here. And you guys, come on, come on, let's let's get these Q&As going and make sure you do a lot of question marks so we don't miss it. So Pac-Man did ask how many customers are on Prayer Grit. <clears throat> Uh, currently, we have about we have over two thousand um, buyer accounts, and also the SEO helps out on a lot of that because it's all so getting pushed by Google and stuff, right? So, and, and right. if so, I can, you, know, what, oh, you mind, Sean? If I can expand upon uh, upon that number a little bit, because uh, there's a, there's a, a bit more that goes into the history of Prairie Grit. A lot of people don't realize this, but the brand really just went live about six months ago to where we made this real big push. And then even more so over the last uh, month, we put a lot of things in place that weren't there before that we felt kind of uh, would limit the brand if we didn't get them done first. So things like integration of the top two payment processors. So you have both PayPal and you have Stripe on the platform, which is a very unique thing to the brand. Uh, the import tool that uh, Shane was touching base on earlier, which has actually gotten a brand new revision over the last 48 hours before it was, believe it or not, a month ago, you were importing one item at a time. and It was insanely slow. And I said, we have to get this fixed before we push it out to everyone. And then we got an upgrade to where you could do a whole category at a time, which was yeah. really great. So if you had a whole bunch of like, let's say you're somebody who has a couple hundred items and trading cards, for instance, you could just import all of those at one time. Well, now it's been revised again over the last 48 hours and you can add multiple categories at a time. You can click one, start it, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. So uh, little changes like that. And then uh, improving just the entire workflow process for the end user to be able to facilitate their need to get help. There's an on-site button so they can just immediately reach out to somebody. So there's a lot of things that need to get done. So I don't want anyone to hear that user base number and think anything negative. It's just like with any platform when it's first starting, you know, that little bit of gusto and that little bit of push, it's, it's happening right now. And, you know, that's the thing is like every platform, when they first start out, they struggle. Like look at Macari, same thing. And I still 
absolutely hate Macari. Uh, nothing against Macari. I just hate the platform. But so far, Prairie Grit, I imported all my items last night, and it was super painless. You type in the item that you want for on Prairie Grit, and boom, it imports it. And it's super. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, 2,000 buyers, it's really nothing, right? But um, ultimately, everybody's got to start somewhere. And um, like Jay said, you know, we, I call it our launch, 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 launch. Because I think I've launched this thing, I don't know, 10 times. I kick it out to the masses and they tell me what they wanted and I bring it back and I fix a bunch of stuff. And actually this is the second, actually this is the second website for Prairie Grit um, that we've launched. And ultimately, you know, I wanted to get it right. You know, I want to make something cool uh, for everybody, you know, to use for years and years to come. And ultimately, you know, if you guys have ideas about the platform and that kind of thing, let me know. I want this to be, um, a user built platform basically i want it to be a cool place for people you know who love to flip mm -hmm. and uh yeah two thousand customers uh customer accounts nothing major but uh you know we are uh definitely uh, making some headway uh you know the good thing about my experience is you know i've done a lot with search engine optimization and um and i know that other websites uh their import tool um, you know, doesn't structure products underneath categories. If you look at Bonanza, Bonanza, you can click one button, sign up, and it just loads all of the products. Uh, the problem about that is, is all of the products are structured under the homepage, not a category. So that really messes with Google. Um, even eBay, you know, eBay is a monster, but their SEO is pretty horrible. Um, you know, they rank well, but their website structure is, is not the best. So um, I took all of that into consideration. And, um, you know, the, uh, to attain buyers, I've spent a lot of time optimizing the flow and the processes for the seller accounts for people to sign up and, you know, people to import listings and that kind of thing. Um, and I've switched gears recently to improve the flow on buyer, uh, the buyer flow. So like conversion rate optimization and to actually attain buyers. Um, so that's, you know, one of the, um, you know, a couple of the things that I'm up to now. And ultimately, you know, we're going to be kicking out content um, at a pretty rapid rate to help people, you know, to teach people on how to, how to, how to sell, how to properly, you know, list an item and imagery and that kind of thing. So. And, and so even if I can. If you guys will let me ask. Quick. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, so do you guys advertise about the website anywhere? Like, do you have ads out online, like getting the word out about it? Um, that's yeah. One. So for like, yeah. So for like, buy, to to attain buyers, we're advertising uh, product listing ads, Facebook, that kind of thing. They all have um, paid advertisement places. Uh, the big thing that we're doing, the, you know, the big thing that I'm pushing for is to get sellers to sign up and to load all of their products. Because the more products you have on a website, the more web pages you have, the bigger deal Google thinks you are, and ultimately the higher SEO rankings you get. And search like um, if you go to Google right now and you search antiques or prairie grit antiques or prairie grit collectibles and you go to the shopping tab, you'll see um, just tons of uh, paid ads. So awesome. we are. That was actually my second question. I was going to say, how do you pull in Google searches? Like if someone's searching for an item and you have your item listed on prairie grit, like how does that pull in the rank under the shopping tab? How does it rank? Yeah. So like, would it come up as one of the first things or would it come up like on the second page or the first page or normally, normally, uh, if you're searching like a specific item, um, normally it's going to come up on the first page. Like if you go and if you have an item listed on Prairie Grit, give it like a week or two, cause it takes a while for Google to index pages, although they're really hitting our, they're hitting the website so hard that I had to throttle them back because, uh, they were dragging my website down, but ultimately, um, if you go search a product, you'll, you'll come up, uh, you know, some of the, some of the big things that, you know, once again, we need to, I need to, you know, the sellers to help push for is essentially listing items, uh, doing it in a way that Google appreciates. And, um, uh, the more items, the higher, you know, the more, uh, the bigger, bigger deal Google's going to think you are or bang or whatever. And ultimately the higher in rank. Now keep in mind, we're, you know, I'm content. We're contending against um, 
like eBay that's been around since, uh, I don't know, um, 98, I think, 99. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, um, it's going to take some time. It's a slow burn. But once it gets going, once it, once it builds some momentum, and it is already, it's starting to build momentum, um, this is going to be an awesome platform for everybody to use. Where did the name come from? Everybody's asking that. <laughs> yeah, the name. Uh, <laughs> so it's really, if, I, if I would have thought about how hard it is to spell, I probably would have named it something different. But um, one moment, let me get a drink here, and I'll, I'll get into that. Okay, so I knew enough about creating a trademark that I needed something original, right? Um, I'm from North Dakota, and essentially, uh, you know, I'm from Fargo, North Dakota, and there's a big push here for Silicon Prairie. There's a lot of startups here in Fargo and um, a big entrepreneurial push where there's a lot of investment, a lot of e-commerce, a lot of startup companies, technology startup companies coming out of this, uh, the Midwest. And I wanted to stick true to like the Midwest. I wanted to stick true to my roots. And so that's where Prairie came in. Um, I thought it essentially could piggyback off of the Silicon um, Prairie movement that's going on around here. And, and then grit, um, once again, you know, I'm from the Midwest and not saying that anybody else isn't like this or whatever, but, um, there's a lot of hardworking people here and there's a lot of hardworking people in America, you know, the U S and I wanted, um, once pr my ultimate goal for Prairie Grit is to, is to get it to compete at an international level. And once it gets there, people are going to think of, you know, I want people to think of, you know, where it came from, the U.S., hardworking people, um, that kind of thing. I don't know. It's, yeah. No, I, I think it's good. Like, um, that's why in my eBay banner, I put Portland, Oregon, because I kind of want to, like, ground me to one area so people realize kind of where their merchandise is coming from. I think it's – people like to know that story. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I think it's uh, – guys, you got to remember um, – you know, with anything, this is kind of like, you know, a blank slate. You know, you, you're drinking a glass of wine. You're trying to get that date with that girl next to you on those wine parties. And she's got a blank canvas. And, you've got a blank canvas. and so you want to sit there with your paintbrush and paint that canvas the way you want it. And I think that this is a fantastic way to do that in the sense that you have this website that you can sell online for. And you've got it. It's such in the beginning stages now that you can really take your time and uh, give feedback and then also see that feedback implemented into something that you want you guys want to use and utilize for reselling so i think it's really really cool can you please put a link in for prairie grid again yes i'm sure one of these gentlemen can do that for you um it, it's so guys there's a lot of questions let's go ahead and go through some of these questions if you guys have more put it in chat uh, can, can I go ahead and jump in on some of the some of those questions real quick? Yes, yes. I've been, I've, been, I've been taking side notes. So, you know, what Sean was talking about regarding SEO or the search engine optimization, and I don't think people realize like how big of a deal that is. You see other brands right now like uh, eBay, they're adjusting the way that they're doing buy it now listings within Australia right now because their SEO is so poor out there and they're having difficulty capturing customers off of Google. And then you even see brands like Bonanza, you know, and we're not trying to, you know, shots fired at anyone, but brands like Bonanza are having to restructure how their searching search is working because they don't use categories correctly within the site. Everything kind of gets thrown into one pile. So it's important for people to understand that when Google is looking for your listings on Prairie Grid, it's looking at the title, it's looking at the category, it's checking for the quality of your photo, it's looking for the placement of those keywords within your description as well as in the header and the footer. So it's looking all over the place. And as far as sell through rate and sell through speed, like of course we all wanna make money, we all wanna make it quickly as possible, but it, it's just like with eBay, your in your listings are going to have to index. They're going to have to be found by the Google bots, and then you're going to get that sell through in time. And you know, one of the other questions too, people were talking about, you know, pricing. You know, there are a variety variety of different plans, and the one that somebody was mentioning, it's a hundred dollars a month. But I, I really want people to understand that is unlimited listings, currently unlimited listings, and no final value fees. So me personally, I'm paying about $500 a month on eBay because I have the cost of my store, the cost of my additional listings and my final value fees on top. And then heaven forbid, I want to do any promoted listings. You know, the, the cost just really, really start ramping up. So as I move my listings across, what I really like is I'm able to lower the cost of my listings five or 10% 
and still make more money than if I sold the exact same item on eBay. So we talk about, well, you think about it that way because you don't have final value fees. So if you lower Group, your cost- master resellers asked, do you have plans for integrating sold items with our eBay listings? Uh, what does that mean exactly? Sold items with the eBay listings? What does that mean? I'm assuming he means if it sells, does it get taken out of your eBay inventory? Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. Yep. And that's something that's that uh, other sites will actually charge money for as far as like importing and managing back and forth. So if you have something listed on one site or the other, if it sells on Prairie Grid, it delists on eBay. If it sells on eBay, it delists on Prairie Grid. And that's by default. That comes free. Mm -hmm. And stuff like, uh, you know, what the equivalent of, you know, a vacation or a markdown tool is free on Prairie Grid too. So, you know, after I imported all my listings, it was two clicks and I was able to lower everything 5% on the platform. And what that does for me is I was already the cheapest on everything on eBay, you know, but we know what the velocity is like on eBay right now, bringing it down another 5%. That's increasing my ranking on all of my items on that platform now. And a lot of people don't realize the value of Google. You know, I sometimes look at eBay and I don't even look at eBay as a selling platform. I look at it as a hosting platform. They're hosting my items because 47% of my sales last month on eBay came through Google. You can pull your analytics and see where the customer came from originally. They were in the Google shopping, looking for an item, saw my listing, came across, and then purchased. Mm. Okay, so if, if you people don't see how much value is there, Google right. is super important. And if we utilize this tool, you know, it's not just about making a buck today. It's about building a long-term, sustainable platform for sellers to be able to do business the way that they've wanted to do business for the last five or ten years now. How do so, you guys handle oh, um, shipping? So like say I sold something, what would the shipping process be? Yeah, so we have a shipping calculator just like eBay does where you um, can add the dimensions and weight and that kind of thing. And you can print the label directly from uh, our system. And we're also on the waiting list for integration with uh, Pirate Ship. Uh, those of you who don't know, I'm a shipping liaison with Pirate Ship as well. So it's going to be sometime in the beginning of 2020. They have a long list of, uh, of e-commerce and non-e-commerce brands who are waiting currently. And that truly will be huge. That's going to be a huge, huge thing. Is and, that and there's, other, there's other things too like that are happening on the back end i know a lot of people are still confused about the new shipping rates especially with first class you know not to promote again but i have a video breaking it all down and i understand it's a little bit complex if you've never used zones before but i saw that change coming six months in advance and i want everyone to know you there's certain things i obviously can't speak on but there's more changes coming and having the power of that tool available is is going to be a very very big deal coming into 2020, especially when we think about things like the fact that PayPal isn't going to be an option on eBay in 2020. A lot of people don't even know that. They're oblivious to that. So having the cheapest shipping option, having the most preferred payment method, these are all a big deal. This is about creating a, a, a path to success for all new and especially used item sellers in the e-commerce sector here in America. Right. Yeah. And we, you know, we, basically built the site based on uh, customer and user feedback. And ultimately my biggest challenge, I think, as being the owner of Prairie Grit is essentially um, keeping that commitment and culture as it grows. And I am just dead set committed on doing that. I, um, I want, you know, I want people to, to be heard and ultimately within reason, um, we're going to, we're going to change things up and improve the web website, um, for you guys, for everybody. Mm. Landshark picker asks, what level of traffic or impressions are you seeing currently? Are you prepared technology wise for the level of traffic you want? I can tell you right now with my impressions, I just uploaded all my listings last night and I have 175 less than 24 hours later, which I think yeah. is pretty pretty good since you list some items on eBay and they get one and they get one impression in, I don't know, maybe a week. Right. So the technology is there um, to scale. So, you know, if I need more server resources or that kind of thing, the technology is there. Um, yeah. As far as list, you know, I quit selling on eBay nine months ago. I had a bunch of life stuff going on. I was trying to get, you know, push Prairie grit. 
And now my life is, you know, I moved, that kind of thing. So my life has slowed down quite a bit. And I started selling again. And I'm just dumbfounded by the lack of views I'm getting and sales. I mean, I'd listed like 200 items in, you know, in the past 30 hours and, you know, maybe sold a couple items. And some of those items that are what I would have considered really, really hot items have got really horrible views. Yeah. And so, you know, the same items I'm moving to Prairie Grit and, um, you know, you're getting a lot of views. And I think part of that is, you know, there's just not, you know, there's just not a lot of items on the site yet. You know, there's roughly, I don't know, 30,000 items on the site. Right. So if somebody comes to the website and they do a search, they're looking at your stuff. So that's another thing to, to consider um, hopping on like right now because you won't have too many competitors. And Connie moment. asked so. me if I had any sales. So I just imported my, my listings literally last night at like two in the morning. So I, I don't expect sales that, that, that quickly because I, let's get real. I haven't listed on eBay for a month and a half. Uh, that's being ramped back up next week. So I'm waiting on that. But the thing is, is, uh, you know, I don't expect it to be that quick because it was stale inventory on eBay that I was selling, you know, here and there. So, right. So some of the things that I've um, taken away from Prairie Grit is, you know, I've had high dollar items on eBay that I had lowered the price. I mean, three, four hundred dollars just to move it. And I've thrown it up on Prairie Grit and it sold for uh, market price for like the price I wanted for it. And that's and, the thing um, is some of, well, and some of the items I, I and I'm excited about it, Sean, because some of the items I put on there last night had like five impressions on eBay in like, I don't know, a month or, you know, right in under 30 days, maybe 10 days, you know, 15, 20 days. And I had like 30 on just one that I only had like five on. I had 30 impressions on it less than 24 hours. Sean, you may uh, have, you may have mentioned this, but how much did you say it cost for a seller to uh, list items on Prairie Grit? How much does it cost? Is there a membership fee or is it per, per item? How is it? Yes. Yeah. So there's multiple tiers. Uh, there's four tiers. One, the first tier, you get 15 items for 10 bucks a month. Um, and that, and that is guys, just, just keep this in mind. If you sell five of those items, you can list five more. So it's 15 total all the time. So it's 10 bucks a month. Um, the next tier is uh, 25 bucks a month for 50 items. And the next tier is $40 a month for a hundred items. The next tier is a hundred dollars a month for unlimited items. Um, so I think that's pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. You know, I did a lot of, um, you know, price comparison to Etsy, you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of, you know, eBay is just out of, out of their mind. Um, I don't think I looked at Amazon, um, but I know what they price. Uh, so I did a lot of, you know, competitive analysis on this. And I think, you know, I tried to get as close to Etsy as I possibly could. I don't know. Well, obviously, well, Etsy doesn't make money. They don't make any money. Um, they go on the whole every year. They're basically financed by venture capitalists. And, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to mention is that, you know, Prairie Grit needs sellers that are committed to the platform. Um, this thing is going to take off and I, we can't do it without, you know, good sellers and good buyers. And I want people to know that if you're buying on my website, and something goes wrong, I'm going to handle it for you. Um, I, I will personally write you a check and send you a check in the mail. I'm not going to, um, you know, I don't want to punish the masses for the, the failings of a few. And I just want to ring that through. And ultimately, you know, I'm looking for people, you know, we want people on the platform that are in it for the long haul um, and aren't necessarily, obviously everybody needs to sell to make money and that's a good thing. And, you know, we're working hard to improve our se the platform, um, you know, for, se for selling items and that kind of thing and we're advertising. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, we're looking for people to come on board and to, um, to back us up so we can get this thing off the ground. Um, you know, they're, in the future, I foresee, uh, you know, one of the big things, and sorry, I'm getting long winded here, but one of the big things I hated about eBay was it's like, I don't even know how much money I'm spending on eBay because they make it so complicated, right? I like got to have an accounting degree to know all of the places where I'm being charged. Um, and I was tired, I, you know, 
I didn't tell you guys this, but the lady, the, the lady that, that I talked to, the customer service rep, she laughed at me when I told her, I was frustrated and I said, look, you guys don't even have a human looking at this, it just baffles me. I'm going to build a marketplace and compete at that time with antiques and uh, collectibles category. And um, she laughed at me. And so um, I, you know, I, I want a human looking at everything. And I know once you get to a certain point, some of that's got to slip, but I don't think it does. Like you need to, we need to, I need to keep the culture in check so that um, everybody's taken care of. Another thing I, another thing I mentioned is that they treated the sellers just horribly. I, you know, I've been on multiple platforms that have treated, you know, treated the sellers horribly. And ultimately, um, you know, we're looking for people that want to be in it uh, for the long haul. And, you know, I foresee some pricing changes, but I don't want anybody to worry about that because if you're in right now at a hundred bucks a month, you're going to be in at a hundred bucks a month until you close your account, you will be grandfathered in because I, I hate, you know, just the way it is. It's just the way I like to do business. Um, I feel, you know, I, I like to treat people the way I like to be treated. Um, and ultimately, uh, if that uh, sounds like something you dig, you should come over to Prairie Grit because, I mean, you know, it's it has legs and yeah. it's it's oh, it's going. So, well, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, with with two thousand uh, buyer accounts, you know, two thousand buyer accounts is still kind of a, a small. It's still small. We're still growing this thing, you know. But uh, but uh, I guess my question is. Do they do buyers have to open up an account to purchase products from Prairie Grit? They don't. Okay, so so essentially, um, the SEO from from all these items that you're that uh, you post on Prairie Grit, like if it shows up on like Google Shopping or something like that, um, then anybody can come and buy. They don't even buyers don't even have to have an account with Prairie Grit. So just basic looking from the outside in, looking. Oh, only two thousand buyer accounts. That does not disqualify everyone else from just going and buying from there either. Correct. Yep. Yeah, it's wide open. And let me let the me ask thing. let me ask a question oh. to Lauren because uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm interested. Is Lauren you got like on the ground floor Poshmark? Correct. Yes, I was so, one of the first people on there. How was your sales the first awesome. six months? pretty good actually like yeah. not to the par of ebay but this was yep. ebay four or five right. years ago right um, and so, you know, i sell a few things a week and then it slowly picked up and now that platform is outperforming ebay let, let me ask you this I spend more of my time on there now let me ask you this do you think you would have been that successful if you would have gotten on the ground floor or if you would have came in later I think I'm more successful now because I've been there for so long right. and I have a right. much larger following. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind, you know, your store pages as well. Like, you, you know, I don't know about Poshmark if they have store pages, but those are also indexed and established. So the more, you know, the longer you have your store on a platform, um, you know, the better established it is and, you know, the better well known it is. And people can essentially search your store. And you'll come up in Google search results. I'm surfing. You're Dude, that's right awesome. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, like, okay, so for instance, let's just say for me, for me, for instance, like I sign up for the hundred dollar plan. It's a monthly deal, but I have like say four or five hundred active listings on eBay. Right now I don't because I have several in my unsold folder and things, but let's just say I have four or five hundred active listings on my eBay and I can import all of those seamlessly to the account and they can just sit there and sell when they sell. And uh, the cool thing is, is right. as long as I make a hundred dollars worth of sales, it's, it's nothing to me. And it's just another Avenue, another revenue stream. So mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Honestly, I have a couple more questions just like listing process wise. So do the listings expire like eBay or do they just stay there forever? They stay there forever until you take them down. And that's another optimization with uh, SEO as well. The same thing that <clears throat> actually eBay is, is kind of following suit because we did it first, but they made that change in Australia to where the only eligible buy it now listings now in Australia, eBay Australia, 
is good till canceled. You no longer can do a 30 day, 10 day, seven, five, three. Those are ineligible as of the 19th of this month. And the reason is it's all about that SEO. It's all about making sure that your listings rank really high and are really visible. My other right. question about listing, I'm going to jump in because I have, I bet people in the chat are thinking it. So like, say I'm clicking on women's clothing. I'm on your site right now for the default sorting. Like, how do you, how is it the top stuff show up? Like, how do you decide that? Is it did the just listed things? Is it the things that have the best keywords? Like for the default sorting, which looks like it's the first thing you see if you click on a category, how do you get into that top area? Now, now currently, um, keep in mind Prairie Grit is, it was it was started by a one and done type of scenario where you'd sell one, one you'd go out and find this cool item and you'd sell it, right? So we can't, we didn't really design it to, uh, to show like most popular up top because your most popular would be sold once and it's done, right? Um, so essentially it's kind of like, it's random right now. It's just a random um, sort. And uh, ultimately we're looking at as soon as more uh, sellers with like quantities and that kind of thing, um, we are definitely going to be looking into that. Now, I think, you know, most popular is good to, you know, take into consideration is, you know, there's multiple things to take into consideration um, with that. So anyway. And there's no doubt that that this is going to get bigger because I know Jay's working hard on like marketing materials for Prairie Grid. I'm I going, mean, I'm going mad with marketing materials. Uh, you are doing this super cool thing. And, Sorry to interrupt you, but this thing it was like is like the the awesomest thing ever, and I liked it because it's kind of marketing to millennials a little bit. But you take the '80s theme, you have like an '80s theme style, and it's like an '80s theme on Prey Grid, and I thought that was just unique. We're we're doing an entire month. Somebody asked that earlier, like, what kind of marketing are you doing? What are you doing differently? Like, let's be honest, okay? Um, I mean, when was the last time you saw another e-commerce site? just do an ad where you're like, Oh wow, that was cool. You know, that was different. That's going to get people buying stuff. Uh, you know, the, the marketing is happening in a very, very fresh ground up type way. And I, I came to Sean, I said, Hey, we should roll through the decades. We should do some really unique stuff to try and engage with more consumers. So we did nineties, eighties, seventies, and next week is sixties week. And I personally designed brand new logos for all four of those, uh, those, uh, 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 years, those periods, those decades, whatever they may be. Uh, and I designed them up and we're asking people to interact with them. And we're trying to take a very fresh and unique perspective to getting consumers to the platform. Because, I mean, look at the other sites. It's just the same tired methodology over and over and over. And I'm, I'm, I'm truly tired of seeing it because it's, it's not really working, you know? eBay isn't growing a base right now. And I'm not, I, I hate to throw them under the bus, but the, the base is not growing. It's well, getting smaller year over I, year. I mean, let's, let's take this and I have a video out on YouTube and me and Scott's talked about this. Oh time. man, you dang it. I was going to say it. <laughs> I went to this, I went to this college. It was Illinois state university. It's a pretty big college. And I talked in two business classes and they were consumer relations classes. So they're studying how consumers behave. Now let that sink in for a minute. When I went into the class, I started both talks. They were about 30 minutes long. And I started both talks on one question. How many people here has sold or not sold, has bought or know about Amazon? Everybody's hand raised. When I said, all right, now how many know about eBay or has bought on the platform? Two classes of 50, a total of five. That's what I was going to say is the thing that eBay is lacking in, in marketing is, is appealing to the newer age. They're, they're lacking marketing and appealing to like, you know, the 20 somethings, the teen, like the late teens, the early twenties, mid twenties, a lot of that younger age group is just kind of out of the loop. Amazon, they've got Alexa in their, in their living room. Amazon is the only platform they purchase everything on. And they, a lot of them don't even know about eBay and that's where eBay's lacking. So like for you guys that are promoting Prairie Grit and, and of course, you know, are building this site, you know, 
you guys are watching eBay fail in this category and you're making sure that you guys don't fail in the same manner. And that's, that's really cool. Plus Jay is really, really good at, uh, at creating banners and uh, advertisements. That guy has helped me out. Thank you but so much. We've, we spent, we've spent years and, and I mean, we have 20 years of experience to watch other e-commerce brands fail around us. Okay. I mean, eBay as a whole is underperforming in its sector uh, by a margin of about 70% right now. I mean, just compare eBay to Amazon. eBay shares are, what, thirty six fifty a share right now? Amazon shares are like, I don't know where they're at, $1,600 a share. It's absolutely nutty, the divide that's happening between the two. And and I, I really can't stress this enough, okay? L look at the eBay platform right now. Less than 20% of the products being sold on eBay right now are used inventory. If you're somebody who sells used stuff on eBay, you should truly well, be worried because what, what can potentially happen is the market can close up on it. And because and a lot of people don't know this, but eBay owns StubHub. They own eBay Classified. They, th th As a brand as a whole, if you feel that you are important to eBay, I, I don't mean to sound like super condescending, but you're truly not because used sellers on eBay right now account for less, less than 4% of eBay's total earnings. OK, and we've even seen them raise fees for uh, for sellers who ha are having issues uh, selling on the platform increases in final value fees. And they say because of the cost to maintain the accounts and we're seeing preferential sort happening for brand new items over used. I mean, how frustrating is it? You have your used item up there and it says click here to see this item new at such and such price. And they're literally driving people away from used to new items. So I have to ask people like what's going to happen in three, four, five years if eBay says, okay, you know what? It's not worth the trouble to make an extra 4% per year. We're just not going to sell used. Yeah. Where is everyone going to go? And that's and, what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a platform so that we can have a home for sellers. We, 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 you know, we rolled out this new anthem last week or week before last, your business, your way. And we truly want to create a platform. It's not even about like the personal money. Like a lot of people don't know this. I haven't made a penny yet. Okay. And I've been working with Prairie Grit for six months now. I haven't made a red cent off of Prairie Grit. And my even my entire company, my Bolorama, my Facebook program, everything, the whole foundation of that is to make a better scenario for sellers everywhere. And that's what we're here for. And I and I understand and I respect the criticism and concern. It's valid. It's your money, it's your time. I get it, but please don't knock it till you try it. There's a team um, of people like busting their butts to make Tommy, Ber Tommy Bernard says, but you guys still sell on eBay. And yeah, if you're a good entrepreneur, like if you're an entrepreneur, not just a reseller, but an entrepreneur, you know, and can foresee, let's try this because I called Scott right after that interview. I'm talking to the, both of those classes at that college and I'm like, wow. We were both blown away by it. So if you're an actual entrepreneur and not just a, just a reseller, just that, you know, cause there's resellers everywhere. You can sell stuff online, whatever entrepreneurs can kind of foresee things or they kind of, you know, go with their gut on, on anything like new platforms or whatever. And so when I had that talk at that college, I was blown away. Scott was too. And I'm like, I got to ramp up Amazon even more because I know Amazon's going to be there. I mean, one of the things I preach is diversification. Go ahead, Scott. That's, what I was, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's not about, oh my God, you still sell on eBay. I'm going to sell on eBay, Amazon, and Prairie Grit. Yep. It's, it's about adding another platform, adding more eyes. You know, you got a platform that's going to gonna charge me unlisted. All I got to do is, is import them over the same listings over. I mean, uh, you get a free month. You don't have anything to lose. Try it for a free month. Scott's uh Right. Did anybody say no? Like what a, uh, Scott's voice is just when he says prayer grit, like it sounds the best. <laughs> like Scott, can you say prayer grit again? No, I cannot. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, it's a Scott, hard thing to say. That, like he, he it's not. Um, it's not prayer grit. I'll, I'll get him to say it again. Um, <laughs> I, He's I, on the next commercial. Yes, I think it's. Uh, Sorry guys, I'm sick. I'm trying to like get the, get over this thing. So the biggest thing is is um, for me, and yes, I, I'm not on it now. Full disclosure, but I'm going to try it. And I think that at the end of the day, what happens is is um, there's been so many times in my life, especially trading stocks and with everything else, um, 
that I wish I was like, man, if I would have got on the ground level of that, it would have been epic, right? I mean, how many times, how many people in chat? We've got 250 people. How many people out of 250 people has thought that? Like if I would have got on the ground floor of, I would have crushed it. Well, and, um, I think a lot of people would agree that most of you guys are that way. So here's the thing. A lot of businesses, a lot of ideas, um, they will not amount to anything. However, it's if you do not give it a go, you're never going to be part of the, the ground floor. It just doesn't happen. You've got to put the work in just like – People could inspire you. I watch Will Smith and so many other cool people, resellers, entrepreneurs, just public figures, whatever the case may be. And um, they can give you what their perception is and you can try to take some of that. But if you don't actually implement it, where is it going to lead, right? So um, I just think that at the end of the day, guys, answer that one question. You may have, you may have, uh, you may have a lot of, you know, points and a lot of, a lot of cool, um, you know, questions slash comments about, you know, other platforms could be PrayerGrid, could be Amazon, eBay, whatever the case may be. But ask yourself this, we all know it's on the ground floor and you have an opportunity to try it for the first time and you have an opportunity to be a, you know, a very new, uh, you know, be a part of a platform that's new and be one of the first. So um, I would take advantage and try it. $20. Maybe. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, JB, JB Phipps asks, can Prairie Grit pull the, the 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 monthly fee out of the earnings or do we sellers have to foot the bill each month? Well, you're kind of footing the bill either way because – Rob, you're Peter to pay Paul. Paul. Yeah. Yeah, so if, if you get funded and it gets funded to your uh, Stripe account or your PayPal account and then when your bill is due, then it gets pulled out. And I want you guys to know this too. We are not sneaky about it either. We're not saying just sign up and then we're going to snipe in a payment from you after 30 days. We send you two emails to remind you to the account that you use to sign up that's saying like, hey, you're going to get charged in a few days. Hey, you're going to get charged tomorrow. Like if you want to do something, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to mm -hmm. take action. So we're not even trying to, to you know, pull the wool over your eyes. And I'll let you get back to that super chat, buddy. Uh, no, just want to say, uh, let me read that actually. So Wade, thank you so much for being so great to my son, Justin. Your son was amazing. Um, I, he, he was like, I don't know. How tall is he? Like seven Four. foot tall. <laughs> and I was like, you want to go bowl? So he's full. Yeah. Really cool guy. Um, I love <laughs> local meetups. There's nothing better to than be face to face with people. And, and uh, to share your experiences, and and uh, I, I humbly bowled like uh, 98, which is like pretty horrible. I think uh, my little guy Cade can bowl better than that. So yeah, maybe we'll go somewhere different. But six two, okay, I'm just short. But yeah, he was a really really cool. Thank you so much for the support. You didn't have to do that, but we're gonna do uh, a local meetup every once every year for sure. Uh, all right. right, so let's see, let's see. All right. I'm going I'm to ramble while you're doing that. Yeah. Uh, I was talking about Vero the other day on uh, Shane's channel, I believe. And uh, people don't realize like how restrictive things are getting on other platforms. Like how many times have you just had your listings ripped off the site, just pulled down on whether it be on eBay or Amazon, because those sites aren't willing to like play ball and push hard to make sure that you're allowed to sell the things that you're wanting to sell. Or how many times have you had a listing where, you didn't realize that you couldn't sell something with a Confederate flag on it, or you didn't realize that you you couldn't sell like a 1920s uh, you know, porcelain figure because of the subject matter and stuff like that. One of the biggest draws that we tell people is that if it's illegally allowed to be sold in America, we don't care what the product is, come on over and sell the bad boy. We're not putting the brakes on what sellers can and can't do like other platforms are doing. If you're allowed to sell it in America, Come sell it over here. You got you got legal lower thirds you want to sell? Bring them on over. You got legal magazines you want to sell? Bring them on over. It's you got. We even have somebody selling CBD oil right now, you know. And 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 we even pushed back to to make sure that that was able to happen. Helped her switch payment processors so she was able to get it through because even the payment processor tried to stop it. But we're fighting for the consumer to be able to do what they need to do. That was my bit. That I think we bit. have a. I think we have a few questions too. Let's see. Uh, the biggest problem I have with cross posting is I forget to remove from the other site. Oh my gosh, I'm right there with you. I get busy. So that's, and I'm like, uh, that, that's that's a one of the questions. And then also, 
Um, Lazy had a question too. Lazy, if you can put your question back in chat so we can answer it. Um, I think he was asking so, if you can find sold comps on the site. Like, just look up solds. Is there a way to do uh, that? Not, not at the moment, you can't, but. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good, man. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, it was cutting out on me. So, at any rate, not at the moment. You can't, we can't see sold items. We know it's really important to people. Um, we're definitely looking into uh, making that a reality. Uh, we want to we want to essentially be the hub for people to come to look at that kind of thing so um not only does it help um well just it's very helpful to everybody to have that so unfortunately yeah. now you have to look at ebay but soon you'll you'll be able to do that on prairie grid a, a lot of the uh upgrades to the site have been about optimizing the user experience to make sure that people can more efficiently get to their items more efficiently pay for their items uh, and, and just making sure it's a smooth process for new sellers to come across too. And, and some of those other tools, like, and I understand where you're like, oh, just, just add completed listings. And, but people don't realize like that's a, a team of engineers working, uh, what could be weeks and it could be 20, 30, $40,000 worth of cost to get that coded out. It's not just like a, you know, flip a switch type thing. And we want all of those features, but we truly need sellers, buyers alike support to build out this fantastic site where even where i'm even rebuilding all of the assets next week to make the entire home page more beautiful make it a, a more visual shopping experience because people somebody was saying like what about the millennials what about the youth audience you know i'm i'm redoing the whole thing to make it a prettier visual shopping experience because i'll be honest i think amazon's ugly I think eBay's ugly. I just don't think they're good looking sites. Like I look at sites like Ruby Lane and I'm blown away with how beautiful those sites are. And mm -hmm. I want our site to be that beautiful as well. Uh, I have a lot of, I have a lot of you. Where's my UK people in the house? So you guys drinking some tea right now? Let me know if you're UK and you're drinking some tea. Um, but I also got a lot of Canadians. Um, and contrary to what people think, not every Canadian has seen a big moose. Um, <laughs> I would like to, Where's my Canadians and UK people in the house? Um, so, wait, so UK people drink tea? What do Canadians do? They chew on beef jerky or? No, 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 no. They melt down snow and drink that. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. What, what is my Canadian? Hey, can I, uh, can't, Canada. No, they eat French fries and gravy. Yeah. That, that Poutine. Could, they, they do have uh, plastic, plastic, uh, plastic money now. So that's pretty good. Me and Scott uh, know what that is like. Uh, hopefully this summer. But where's uh, that? That was one question. Is is are you guys open to to you know Canadian sellers? We're definitely open to that. Um, ultimately, I I don't know what kind of rules are you know that I have to follow in order to make that happen. Um, but I'm definitely looking into that. That's ultimately one of the big things that I want to do over the next 18 months is let open it up. To, or to any country that I possibly can. I know there's some laws that I have to follow, but ultimately, you know, that, you know, with that comes, I have to build the uh, the shipping platform or the shipping calculator to integrate with their, um, you know, prices and their, you know, systems and that kind of thing. So there's some, there's a lot of big stuff going on there that needs needs to happen before. Um, but I think most of that stuff to ship worldwide and in, 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 into different countries is ultimately there. Um, I think it would make it a lot easier. I could launch it quickly, um, it, you know, using a flat rate. If you guys don't mind using flat rate and that kind of thing, you know, I, I've had a lot from the UK. Uh, you know, one guy in particular, I remember distinctively, he's like, "Hey, we need uh, we need this platform on this side of the pond too," and um, I felt horrible. Uh, much research into what it's going to take. Um, I know technically what it's going to take. I just don't know like what kind of international laws, if there is any that I need to follow. Sean, uh, you, you know, Sean, you know what this is right now. This is your vision becoming a reality, yeah. and that's uh, that's pretty amazing. I I applaud you. It is amazing. I mean, you guys. Video sponsored by Prairie Grit disclosed. Uh, it's a video that we're shooting on Wade's channel. That we have the guest, the owner of Pregrit, on here tonight. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, we're we're here to help sellers and just new ideas, new people, new whatever. I mean, 
the, this show being sponsored, that's 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 a good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's, let's go back and and and, and put that prairie grit stuff in. And yeah. No. Full disclosure, guys. Um, I have not got a penny from from prairie grits, um, nor have I sold on there yet. But I am definitely going to give it a try because for me, it's just like I'm one of those guys that like to try everything. Um, mm-hmm. I, I want to see like what it is, you know. I, and believe me, I didn't start out that way. I used to be. I'm only eBay. I'm only <laughs> okay. Well, I'll try Amazon, and then I was like, oh, I hate sharing. What's the community sharing? Thing? I'll try Poshmark, and now I'm like, Poshmark, come here. So I'm gonna try Progret. Come here. Let's try this out because at the end of the day, um, it it's all about you know this Sunday show. You know, I'm just one person here, but it's also about it's just talking reselling. I don't care if like I started a garage sale company out here and. And, um, you know, did like a Wade's Ventures FBA and you guys can send me your crap and I'll store it here and sell it myself. I'm still going to talk about it because somebody may be interested. So that being well, said, um, I, I think it's really important to understand that new ideas, new, yeah, I mean, this is a reselling show. So any, any ideas that you guys have, um, we would love to hear about it and love to talk about it. And I think that this is a great platform built by resellers. And um, I do see one one issue myself is the fact that like it's going to take a team of people to build this. Um, so you guys, you know, you guys, you're going to have your hands full because you're going to need coders. Like there's going to be a lot of work ahead of you, but that being said, I do see uh, the main part is to see the vision and uh, somehow get to that. But, and you know, to kind of yeah. back off that a little bit is like, we bring content out to help you guys. So I can probably go into five Facebook groups and see about 15 people saying, why are my sales slow? Why is eBay slow? Why, if it's slow, try something new. Have an open mind. Try Poshmark. Try Prairie Grit. Try Macari. Try something different. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, if I never would have tried Amazon, I never would have sold in January and, and December $18,000 a product. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it takes... It takes, um, you know, putting, scattering your eggs in several baskets to really make it, as, especially if you want to be a full-time reseller. You know, it definitely, it takes scattering all your eggs in several different bas- baskets so you have multiple streams of income. Absolutely, Jason. I do, um, I, I do think um, uh, Poshmark will move into Canada before anything else. Um, that would make complete sense. So possibly... Uh, Let's see, Frank, you probably will be getting Poshmark in Canada soon. I think they're getting – I could be wrong, but I would assume like a round of funding to start doing international stuff pretty soon. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. When is there going to be a mobile app rolled out? Do we have a mobile app time frame? Uh, I'll Not take yet. That. <laughs> that's, that's, again, another time. one of those things that's uh... – it's very, very, very expensive. A lot of people don't know this. Just to place an app on the App Store, just for Apple alone, even if you even if you paid the dev team and everything to do it, it's fifteen thousand dollars to get it placed and ten thousand dollars per upgrade, and that's just Apple. And then you have to pay a, a associative fee just to place the app again on Android. So, you know, 2021, 2020, you know, it, it all depends on rollout. If we have a massive bump in uh which we expect we expect big numbers over the next uh quarter to two quarters we expect a huge 2019 holiday season it's certainly going to be viable coming into early 2020 that we'll have uh, an app e- at least halfway in development or ready to roll out that'd be and, cool and then kind of expand upon what uh shane was talking about earlier as far as the team uh it, it's truly it's it's me and sean right now and uh the the dev team uh, uh on the other side of the world and right now I, I don't think people understand like how important that human element is <clears throat> if you message the page if you go to facebook right now and you message the page you go to prairie good right now and message the page our phones are going to go off me, me and Sean's phones are going to go off and a human is going to get back with you like immediately. It's all about that human touch, that domestic customer service, you know, and I tell people it's, it's humans buying from humans. That's the real difference. You know, if you, if you go to eBay, I mean, when was the last time you tried to find something? I'll, I'll even bet somebody right now. I'll give you $50. Go find me a brand new PS3 controller that's authentic on eBay. I spent over two hours 
before contacting domestic customer support because I couldn't find an authentic one for the game store that I uh, that I owned at the time. And <clears throat> having a site that's American based, American run, American customer service with American selling quality American goods, and it's not flooded with you know low quality uh, you know drop shipped uh, international chintzy products. It's, it's important. No, I, I hate to say it, but I mean, I, I made this massive piece on my channel regarding how we're coming into a really scary point right now with the hyper saturation of, of international goods flooding swap meets and thrift stores and especially e-commerce platforms. It, it's disgusting. And people don't realize, well, yeah, the site might be small, but guess what? You get to find what you're looking for. And let me, let me say this, as Brenda Bodwin said, I've been doing this for years and uh, no one will ever gain traction on a site like this. You know, that's exactly uh, kind of the thing my sister told me before I started selling on Amazon and I started doing YouTube. My family thought I was insane. And I mean, now I, you know, I've taken literally three calls from casting agencies in the last two weeks. So that's the thing is you can't in this business, if you're an entrepreneur, you can't say this is insane. It'll never work because you're not having an open mind. It, do we know for sure it'll work? I mean, if they work hard enough, it will. It'll take time and it'll I've take had, a lot of effort. Here's right. the thing. Yeah, I've had, no. I've had no. more people tell me. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, sorry about that. I have more people who've told me that. You know, one of the first people I asked, hey, I'm looking I'm, I'm looking to uh, build a website, um, a friend of mine, I'm looking to build a website that will compete with eBay. What do you think of that? And they're like, oh, you're crazy. And I mean, that <laughs> hindered me for a while. That like stopped me, you know, for a little bit. I, it was like stopped me in my tracks. And it's like, I've had more people tell me that, you know, I'm not ready for prime time. This is never going to work. You can't do, you know. It's like, look, they put a man on the moon back in like, I don't know when, like if they, it's, if they could put a man on the moon, I can build a marketplace with an e-commerce background. I mean, it, it it's literally takes hard work, dedication, and that entrepreneurial spirit. And that's all it's going to take. And ultimately, well, obviously, you know, uh, customers and sellers and that kind of thing, but I mean, build a platform, make it cool, make it attractive. And I think, you know, people are going to use it. And Ultimately, well, that's been my no, no, don't lie to me, Sean. It also takes money, right. <laughs> but it takes money. But, but here's, here's the thing, money. though. Here's the thing: is uh, you are my hero. You are my inspiration, Sean, because I've been thinking about doing the same thing for seven years, and yep. the simplicity of it is, you know, uh, you know, you want to. Sometimes I just don't like playing an eBay sandbox, but I don't have any other options, and you. Are are building that other option definitely? Uh, Landshark right. Picker asks, "Can you give uh, us one example of any item that sold on PG uh, CBD oil?" There you go. Give an example. What was the question? Sorry, something that yeah, sold. Yeah, can you give us one example of any item that has sold on PG? And I said CBD oil is one because well, I here I got uh, here's an order that just came through like thirty minutes ago. You guys see that? Yep. That's somebody's item sold. Like, you know, and that there's been like probably 20 of those here in the last five hours yeah, or so, something like that. Yeah, I'm going to check to see if it's my item right now. Now I wonder. Yeah. You know what? The, okay. So everybody needs to realize that this platform is fairly new still. Very, very new. Yeah. It's in right. an infancy stage. And the only way, right. you know, somebody's got to bite the bullet to make something like this blow up and explode. Like you can't, you got, you got to first, like launching a site like this, you have to have just swarm it with sellers, get product out there that's able to be purchased. Then you can market and advertise this to buyers because the stuff is already there for them to, to, to purchase. And so, you know, it's kind of a delicate balance, you know. It's a balancing act. It really is. But, but uh, you know, it has to start somewhere. And it's still, it's still Here's early. The thing. Amazon, as a giant as they are, me and Scott constantly sit here on a Friday night saying, damn you, Amazon, your servers are down again, and we can't list anything. Amazon, 
has bugs. Too. eBay well, has bugs. Don't Every forget, I is going to deal with this, and this is the point of tonight's show. Is yeah, eBay is going to be around, you know, but once they start losing traction in a whole, a whole entire group of the population, that's when you have to start thinking. Okay, let's think ahead. Um, you know, every great entrepreneur in the history of of this country, you know, was built on on the entrepreneurship, like uh, J.P. Morgan. And if they said, "Oh, banks won't make it," he never would have built a bank. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's it's been my experience that most more people are going to tell you how crazy you are not to do something than to do it. So, if you have a great idea, like don't listen to the people that you're talking to if they're telling you not to do it. Just do it and see what happens. Um, Here, I'm a, can, I, can I jam in a couple of things? There's two things I want to say. Okay. One. Yeah. Amazon's a huge company. They, 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 they generate massive revenue every year. How much money have they made? How much money have they paid out dividends to shareholders? Zero dollars. Okay. That company is spending every single month, every single dollar they take and reinvesting it back in. So you can say, yeah, Amazon's really crushing it, but how so? No one's turned a profit over at Amazon yet. No one here has because we're constantly reinvesting. And then as far as, you know, who, who do you want to work with? Do you want to work with people who have a dream, a vision? They want to make things happy. And I'm trying not to sound dejected here, but it's a little, a lot of hate coming in. But the reality is you have a panel here of six people, okay, that started with zero subscribers, okay? They had an idea. They had a dream. They had a vision. They wanted to make something. They wanted to make it happen. And here we are, okay? We've all accomplished something to be here. And you, you, you are here because you believe in some level what we are individually doing. You believe in our content, you believe in what we're preaching and we're coming to you with another idea and we're saying, hey, we have a track record of making things happen. Throw us a bone, we'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing, one thing to note is that, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're listening on one platform and you have multiple, you know, you have the same product on one platform, um, your, your product is out in the search results, Google search results one time, okay? If you list on two platforms, now you have two chances that somebody's going to see that item, which is better than one, right? You know, you do three, you know, you go to three platforms, you know, so on and so forth. So ultimately, a lot of people don't realize that um, your product is going to the search results. It's going to a search engine. It's going to be advertised. And ultimately, the more I've learned in e-commerce for the past 10 years, uh, the more product and the more items you have for sell, the more you can sell, the more you're going to sell. If you don't have it listed, it's not going to sell. You want to double your prop, double your revenue, uh, triple your inventory. Mm -hmm. and, or, oh, go ahead, Sean. Sorry, yeah. sorry man. Uh, Connie, my living wife, she said you don't need to put down eBay to promote another platform. I didn't put down eBay. Um, you can actually go over this whole video, and I said that. Uh, you need to diversify and Maybe. that's yeah. super important to know. And if you don't try it, you're never going to know. I would rather try it and be wrong. And, and people don't understand. We have a working relationship with eBay. Like it's, it's not some like closet company that is just, you know, sniping listings from eBay. We had to build a relationship with eBay, be granted permission to use their API to be able to import your listings across from eBay. It's mm -hmm. not a fly by night thing. And if anyone feels, uh, you know, uh, confused by some of the things that I'm saying about eBay. I report the e-commerce news every single week. I, a comprehensive breakdown on the financial standing of the brand and everything I'm saying is fact-based. You might not agree with it. Doesn't mean it's untrue though. So, you know, the, the, the climate is changing and, uh, I, I want them to do well. That's the thing people don't realize. I say this all the time. I would love it if eBay did well too, because the more successful people within the market, the better everyone can do if everyone's shopping online because there's multiple places to shop everyone wins you know Likewise, more money going yeah. out more for sellers is there a, what, what the returns uh that was one question that was the return structure there uh the return structure essentially you just you know the buyers and sellers have to work together at this point to um handle that so essentially you know what you like let's say i sold an item and the customer's not happy um, I just, you know, the customer would reach out to me and I would just uh, offer them a refund. Can I jump in with a question for Shane? 
Yes, go ahead. I think this will be good and kind of change the show over to the listing process here. So can you show us like a screen share of what it looks like if you were going to list an item on here? I'm all my just, items. I'm really curious. I just so, want to see what it looks like. All my items actually have been imported. So that's a little oh, different. Okay. I actually haven't listed an item yet because I've done it in less than 24 hours. So oh, cool. the That's thing awesome. is, is I have several items that I have to list on Prairie Grip because I cannot and I'm not allowed to list them on eBay. Uh, you got Confederate flags back there, Shane? No. <laughs> no, yeah. no. It, it, it's a book that has a swastika on it. And uh, it's a it's an educational book um, that uh, was wrote to kind of go over the the history of the, the whole U.S. Uh, conf conflict. And I can't list it because it has a swastika. So I have to put it on Prairie Grant. You know, there, there's always going to be, uh, for me, right. I, I, I try to look at just, you know, whenever there's like a, a challenge, you got to think that there's another opportunity mm -hmm. behind that, no matter what it is, reselling, non-reselling related. So it's, and that's the thing is, is you've got, you know, if people saw it, like I love eBay. Um, I'm a big fan of eBay. In fact, my, one of my goals, everybody knows, is to be an eBay speaker at eBay Open. Not only to be a speaker, but also I've got somewhat of stage fright, believe it or not. Nobody knows that, and I think that would help me. So, you know, that being said, you know, the, the, the idea here is, is you, you bring an idea to a ton of people, and if a fraction of those people – take in the information they actually use it then that's fantastic and that's kind of the idea here is so people that want to kind of diverse into it something a new startup that's looking to you know sell their stuff online then this is for you and um, also if you want to put it because a lot of people have their input in chat and that's fantastic good or negative and just will take that input and give it to people that are starting a platform up so they can implement the, the input that you have with what they're doing and so at the end of the day, guys, that's the thing. So may not be it for everybody. Maybe like, right. like when I first started, I was an eBay guy. I'm always going to be an eBay guy. I mean, I, I had an eBay t-shirt on yesterday. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to sell another platform. Right. So, you know, if a fraction of those people want to come and try something new that's, that's out there, then do it. Go for well, it. But just, like, just like Amazon. Amazon's not for everybody. You know, there's people that are happy selling on eBay and they don't even want to try Amazon and that's fine. Like I was one of those people until Scott came along and changed my mind and I, we were up till five in the morning, but he finally changed it. It was like five in the morning though, when he changed it. <laughs> I thought I'm going to be up your house and beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the question you have to ask yourself when you're like, I only do eBay. Like eBay is the only platform I sell on. Like, all right, now you have to sit back and ask yourself like what what is eBay doing for you to to keep you that loyal that that selective and that being the only platform you sell on like i mean if you just just step out of your comfort zone just a little bit and try something else i mean mm -hmm. you'll realize that i mean there's money there too so and there's money over here too and the more you do that, I mean, the the better off you're going to be. I right. I've been preaching that for a few months now, and I'll I'll just keep on it. So well, and and I've been preaching the same thing for my entire YouTube career is make sure you have multiple streams of income. I have always, always, always said that sell on other platforms, diversify. If you have a, a stream of income on Amazon, have a backup because you don't know when eBay is going to suspend you. You don't know when Amazon is going to suspend you. And for all we know, eBay could up and suspend me tomorrow for something stupid. They've done it. You know, they've done it before. I was suspended on eBay for like six months for a listing that they took down and I relisted and they got hit with a Vero. First, it was uh, first. It was that it was not allowed. Um, so I took that down, listed a similar item, but it wasn't the same. And this was back in my early days. And uh, that got hit for a Vero and I got suspended. So, I mean, you just never know. All right. Ultimately, uh, to, to hit on, you know, kind of like the subject that we're talking about eBay, um, you know, I bought, a, I bought a set of dog dish vintage hubcaps for like 10 bucks and I sold it for like 70 bucks on eBay, my first item. 
and I was blown away. And so I love eBay. Um, you know, there are issues. Uh, when that lady laughed at me, I guess I'm, I'm holding a bit of a resentment, and um, I want to, um, you know, I just wanted to, you know, basically they shut me down and uh, without even a human looking at it, and I was taking care of my customers. And uh, to me, that was unacceptable. And the lady laughed at me, uh, went into the developer's office the next week, started building Prairie Grit, and signed up that same week on eBay with a different account. So not sure what the point was of shutting me down. I mean, I just opened up another account, but besides all that, you know, love eBay. I just don't want somebody dictating whether or not I can make money on the internet, period. Mm -hmm. And that's why I built Prairie Grid. I mean, yeah, if oh, you're- you just messaged me right now. Just got our first sale on PG right now during the panel. Yay, us. That was a couple that I was working with earlier today. Um, so. Congrats to you, Anna. I'm really proud of you. That's really awesome. Well, I, all I can say, guys, is I enjoy I enjoy just selling online. I mean, literally, I'm standing up on my sit and stand desk right now, talking to you guys, and um, I've got everything set up. And whether I sell this bad boy on WadesVentures.com or PrairieGrid.com, actually. Wade's Ventures is never going to happen because I'm just too lazy to start my own website up. I should. I should start my own website up. I don't have it. But um, it, it's it's always fun to me. Like I love like the conversation of reselling. That's why I did the live event. You know, I love talking to people, whether it's about platforms or it's about items or just about ideas. Like the thing is, is, um, you know, I got to be honest, a lot of people, including myself, are – I'm we're stuck in our ways sometimes, you know, and it's nice to have some change. It's nice to have a different conversation. It's nice to see kind of where things are going in life and um, whether you have a new idea and you agree with it or not, or if you have a new idea and you're going to try it or not at the end of the day, it's still something to talk about. Um, and Tommy, I did see your, your question about the affiliate. I do not have affiliate through Paragrip, but you guys can sign up for affiliates. So he'll put the link out if you guys are interested. You can sign up for an affiliate program for Prairie Grid. Um, but that being said, any other questions in chat regarding platforms, Prairie Grid, um, my new hat, uh, my new <laughs> um, If you got type one in chat, if you want to hear Scott say Prairie Grid before the end of the show, so type one if you want him to, to say Prairie Grid before the end of the show. Um, I would love to see hear hear that again. But yes, if you guys have any questions, please put it in chat. We'll go for another five minutes. We have a lot of ones. You have don't have to be lonely at resellersonly.com. <laughs> Here's the thing. That brings me my – you guys know like five shows ago I was giving Jason some problems because I was like, man, start a resellers dating website, right? And people were like, oh, my gosh, that's such a good idea. <laughs> Some of you guys said it's not a good idea, but guys said, see, I could be like, that's a horrible idea. That's a horrible idea. Wait a yeah. minute. You cannot take a dime from that. That would be selling out. Uh, you what? can't put two horrors in one house. Don't make a right. <laughs> Get this, guys. Um, that is an it, awesome idea. Yes. Jason's site. You could do promoted listings and promote yourself to the top of the list. You've got me. You got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy. Okay. So that being said, though, it's still conversation. Like, um, it just it's it's just it's funny. Like, <laughs> I, I love I love this time in my life. I mean, yeah, I wish I could go back in like the 1500s and be like, dudes, you guys are like, there's gonna be cars soon. Just just hang tight, right? Um, <laughs> or or like maybe go ahead, you know, 500 years and be floating in the air with a really cool car or something. I don't know, but. I love living at this time in my life because you can pick up a phone, create an idea, create a website, create whatever you want. And um, yeah, so it, it's been great. Uh, what what can we sell in the Poshmark gift category? Anything. What? Can you sell hard goods? Not usually. They allowed it 
for like two weeks before Christmas, but it's yeah. just anything you deem a gift and it has to be new with tags. See, I've never sold on Pop Park, so I just knew they didn't allow the hard drives. Man, I thought I was about to liquidate my entire storage unit on Poshmark. <laughs> we were talking about SEO and stuff. It doesn't help your SEO at all because no one's going to like search for sweater gift in Google. So I don't use it because I just don't think it works very well. But I just categorize right. things how they should be. I should have. I should have started selling on Poshmark on the ground floor, but I just didn't, and I missed it because everybody's like selling Poshmark. I'm like, no, I hate it, and then I didn't get on the ground floor of it. So then, when I didn't sell on, I'm like, well, I have all this work to do, and everybody's way ahead of me. So <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm I'm curious over there if uh, if um, the death piles have been dropping over there in the uh, the. Uh, no. uh, uh, you can see pastor and it's like it's still pretty crazy over there yeah see i uh so i haven't listened on ebay in a month and a half and so for me i'm gonna be um ramping back up in a, in a week because i'm going to basically fully be working from home that's it so uh i'll have you know less work hours logged like i can do more work um and then do you know some other stuff so Yep, that and and at, like I feel like all the sites like I I don't sell on Bonanza or whatever, banana, banana, but, banana. Uh, I, I don't sell, but I supposedly you can kind of mass upload your uploadings there too. It's a, it just it's one of those things where it's like man, cross posting is a thing now. Understand that more platforms are popping up, um, and cross posting is a thing. Offer up, you know, and you know they're doing their thing now with shipping. So, um, it's it's just. Get your items out to more people, more chances. It's more fish, more hooks in the water to catch more fish. That's kind of the way I'm doing it. I, I try not to run myself ragged with too many, but like, it's just a great time to sell right now. It's just incredible. So yeah. I, I really, I just want to say thank you so much for not just starting up a reseller website, um, but like people like you who have an idea and try to implement that idea it's not easy and it's not easy to like come in front of a crowd and explain your idea because you know, you're going to get picked apart because they're putting up, you know, they're, they're having your idea and putting it up against an idea that's been there for years when you're just starting. And you guys got to realize that it, with any startup, like to, you want to, you have an idea to do something different. That's the core, but there's still a lot of small details that need to make, you know, you need to make changes on and that's over time process. So I just want to say kudos to you too for wanting to do something new because it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of money and uh, really cool. And, and we're doing our best to get to all the messages that are coming in right now. I know some of you guys are messaging the, uh, the page and we're, we're doing our best to get back to you in real time. I, I want to touch base on one of the great questions. Somebody was asking about uh, magic, the gathering. And I literally have a Ravnica set here and a couple of booster boxes of ultimate masters. Yeah. That's the category we're going to have added. So if you have a category, something that you really enjoy working with, that's not there, just message us. We can usually get it turned around in about 24 to 48 hours. We can have any category that you need added. And if you need subcategories, I'm a gamer myself. I wanted to see reproduction and I wanted to see homebrew cartridges, separate categories from uh, original copies. And we had those added to the site as well. So anything you need, we can have get done. And then somebody else was asking as far as volume first month, if you have, we have somebody here with 8,000 items that they want to import across. It doesn't matter the volume. If you're coming on to the hundred dollar a month option, you could have 20,000 listings. Uh, and if you are somebody who is like really, really like a mega volume seller, reach out to us first. Let us know what, you know, the amount of volume you're bringing across. And we're, we can do a few things to, to try and uh, assist you more so than if you're bringing, you know, 10 or 20 items across. We want to make sure we're, uh, we can build a, a very close working relationship with people who have a lot of items are bringing over. Right. So I got this question too. Um, again, if it sells, if you import the products using the eBay import tool and it sells on eBay, it, it will drop off of Prairie Grit and vice versa. If it sells on Prairie Grit, um, it will drop off of eBay. If it, if you have quantities of something and something sells on Prairie Grit, it's going to drop the pricing or drop the uh, quantity on eBay and vice versa. So wait, do you already have this happens. implemented? Yes. Yep. Yeah. We 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 oh, waited yeah. to hold back until we had 
that done as well. We waited to hold back until PayPal was fully integrated, you know, and even before I came to Wade and Scott and all of that, you know, cause the site's been around for a while. And I've been working on it for a long while. I told him, I'm like, I don't even want to present the idea to anyone to promote it. And Sean was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, let's hold back. Let's make sure everything is 100% first and then we can pitch it to everyone and then give them a, a essentially a finished product. And somebody commented and they said, you know, you guys are going to need a lot of funding. And our goal is to not take any more at this point because the infrastructure is there. We, you know, we, we, we just, we're, we're just, we're waiting. I mean, we have thousands of people selling and, you know, as you can see tonight, we're probably going to have another 50 or a hundred thousand items added to the site. That is insane. We're probably looking at about another million items, maybe 2 million items over the next 30 days, which is just because of how impressions work and everything. We're looking at, you know, a couple thousand more buyers coming to the site, you know, registered are, and unregistered. Go ahead. Are you guys planning on integrating Poshmark the same way you've integrated eBay? Yeah, we're, we're looking to get as many uh, uh, sources of integration. Right now, we even have Etsy on the platform. So if you're an Etsy seller, you can in integrate those items uh, straight across. But we're looking to do as much integration as possible. And, and I give you My idea is uh, GoDaddy because I know someone asked about bookkeeping. And I mean, it keeps track down below, but GoDaddy would be amazing. Yeah, and yeah. all the things that are, aren't going to cost anything, you know, which are, you know, a handful of lines worth of code uh, because the, the API is already built for it. They're very uh, user-friendly APIs and you just drop them in and you're good to go. Those ones we're going to roll out as quickly as possible. Um, and it's going to be based on the needs of the people coming to the site. So we have a lot of people coming and saying, we need this, we need this, we need this. We're going to bump it up in priority. And, and then some of the things that are kind of like luxury things, we're going to push back a little bit. Now, I know that this wouldn't make sense for a developer of Prairie Grit, but I still have to ask this question. Uh, would, <laughs> would you guys ever build it to where you could literally export your listings to another platform, reselling platform? And the only reason why I ask that is because if you integrate Poshmark and eBay, just those two alone would drive a lot of traffic to you guys in the form of sellers, because especially with your integrated... Uh, um, the way your inventory management system works. Okay. At that point, I mean, it's just a click of a button and all of those listings are on Prairie Grit. So we, uh, yeah, ahead. we would, we would definitely do that. If um, it, it's up to those sites to want to do that though, it's up to eBay. It's up to uh, Poshmark to want to do that. Uh, essentially I can get you an export of your products at any time. If you guys want one, um, I know that eBay does have an import tool. can't remember what it's called, but it's really hard to use, uh, but it is, I've used it and there's a lot of like ar archaic code, good, good thing. Um, and they have it and you can do it. Uh, it's just really difficult. I don't know about Poshmark if they allow that or not. And I don't know about Etsy either. So it would be up to them, but yeah, we're definitely, we're um, all, all in on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think one of the biggest gaps in technology with in, in, the realm of reselling right now is um, cross posting eBay to Poshmark or eBay to Mercari and Poshmark to Mercari. Like the cross posting of all of this stuff is really like the biggest gap technology wise I'm seeing right now. And is, uh, is there, in Poshmark, is there a bill? Can you import like an Excel spreadsheet of products? No. no, no. Okay. So it's, I guess it's just up to them to develop that. Mm. It, it, it's expensive process, uh, you know, but we're, we're, we really want this to be a user friendly experience for everyone involved because I get it. Listing really, really sucks. Like sitting down and, and running all your listings, it's time consuming. And I still list myself. I go out and I source, I hand source flea markets, swap meets, yard sales. I don't do a lot of RA, uh, but I, I, I even have a pile of stuff next to me that I just showed uh, recently, but yeah, it takes a while. And we, we want all these rich features on the site. We want to give people analytics. We want to be able to show people, you know, what kind of marketing is actually working. And, and unlike, you know, other brands that are really out of touch with the consumers, like we even have a once a week live show where we talk about developments and updates to the platform where you can straight up talk with the owner directly and ask your questions. I mean, I dare anyone to try and get in touch with somebody domestically with, with eBay right now. It is so incredibly hard and heaven forbid you want to change anything. And I, let me not just single out eBay, but I mean, any platform, pick a platform, 
Etsy, Mercari, Posh, Bonanza, you know, you name it. They're they're tricky to work with. So that's the thing. Like we want the best for the consumer. And I think anyone who's, you know, of the mindset that we're putting profits before potential, I think that's just a, a, a you know, and, and forgive my usage, but I think it's kind of foolish to think that way. Uh, we really do care about the consumer. And my whole legacy, my two or three years on this platform have all been about benefiting the consumer uh, and, and making I, sure that, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off of that. My, the pricing structure on Prairie Grit was, you know, I can't beat Etsy because Etsy is like 20 cents for three months of listing, right? So can't beat them. Um, but I need to make money too. Like a business, I don't need to make money. The business needs to make money. Etsy um, even business, business is un, it's unable to grow if it doesn't have money, right? Um, and I don't want to have to go out and raise a bunch of money. I can do that. I do have that. Um, I, you know, I'm connected that way. I can do that. But uh, do I want to do that? No. I want like awesome sellers to help me build this thing so that we have a place to go and we'll never have to worry about dealing with somebody who punishes the masses for the um, for the shortcomings of a few. So if I got a guy who's robbing people blind, Prairie Grit is going to cover that cost. We're going to boot him off the site. I'm going to do everything in my power to track his IP and his name and whatever. But, you know, you can't catch all of that. Um, I, I want a place for everybody. We want a place to for everybody to go to, um, and they're not worried about um, – all of the restrictions and um well, you know and the we're, we're also working with sellers who who are sellers that are having trouble you know uh, uh we're producing training videos that teach people how to take better photographs we're producing training videos that teach people about uh how to correctly price items to be competitive within the market and i i know sellers of years who still don't understand the correct way to price uh you know we're, we're teaching sellers how to utilize seo so that way they can improve their ranking and we're even pulling sellers to the side that you know where there's two scenarios one where we're seeing a lot of goods that aren't right for the platform like a lot of that you know really cheap uh, you know, tat from international uh, uh, sources and, you know, we're, we're, we're talking with them. And then we're also talking with people who, who the listings aren't really the best looking. And we're, we're saying like, Hey, check out this video. We can help you make your listings look better. We can improve your sell through. We're, we're going to, and that's for the benefit of everyone as a whole. Cause if people go there and everything looks beautiful, great. And if you see a seller where you're, there's something you're concerned about, you know, as Sean was saying, or somebody who tries to pull one over on you, we got you covered. Uh, you know, we got you covered more than ever. You, we'll give you our number. You call me. We'll take care of you. So let's do this. Let's do a. Uh, we'll we'll start with Scott, and we'll give our final thoughts slash um, exit interviews. Um, Scott, can you read the title for me of, of today's show? I don't have it open anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There, there was so many people typing one. Okay. Scott. Yeah, but only the person who typed two is the only one that mattered. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> my, my my thoughts are is you you got to have an open mind to all this. If you know, we are doing as resellers, you're doing you're doing stuff that everybody has told you you can't make a living at, you can't make money at it. Oh my God, I can't believe you do that. You face doubters every day, and you know. If you're if you're stuck on one platform, you're you're limiting your opportunities. You know, you know what have you got to lose? A free month to try it out. I mean, you know, I even heard Jay on another show say if that wasn't enough time, he could individual work with you to help give some extensions. I'm, you know, they're going to try to do their best to help you out. I mean, it's worth a shot. I'm going to give it a shot. Um, you know, eBay and Amazon. There's problem. There's problems with every single platform. Mm -hmm. And there's good things about every single platform, bad things about every single platform. So you know, it's 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 your job as a reseller to get the max out of your items through the platforms. So, all right, let's go to Jason. I, I mean, let's not go to Jason. We'll go to Shane. <laughs> all right, everybody. So here's here's the thing, and here's your takeaway: is is this is you want to just like Scott said. You want to increase the amount of items it's being seen, whatever else, you know, and that's our job is to sell things is to actively try new things because businesses that don't evolve die. Toys R Us, 
Bonton stores, Bergner's, Carson's, Hershberger's, Yonkers, uh, Payless. They didn't evolve. They, they, they were stagnant. And what you have to understand is it's not for everybody. Amazon's not for everybody. Progress not for everybody. eBay is not for everybody. But don't hate on it until you try it. I mean, that's that's the one thing is I'm I'm probably am not supposed to be here right now. Like I have beat the odds in my life. Like I grew up poor. I everything else. Like that's the thing. If you really want to make it work, you can. It's how hard you work, and it's if you if you're willing to wake up every day and put in the work. Period. Lauren, go ahead. Um, I pretty much agree with everything Scott said, so I'm not going to re-say it all, but keep your options open, always be learning, and always be willing to diversify, because that's what makes you a good reseller. Do your research, learn new things, <laughs> list, 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 list everywhere you can and figure out what works. Love it. With that. <laughs> love it, love it. All right, let's go to, uh, by the way, guys, go check out Jason if you guys are storage unit. YouTube watchers. He's got some great videos. That's why I wanted to save you last, Jason, to give you a props because I'm I'm loving your storage unit videos, my man. And he uh, found gold. But go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. I appreciate it so much, Wade. Thank you so much, guys. You have uh, always been a massive help to me and, and wonderful friends. Uh, awesome, awesome show, guys. Sean, you're doing fantastic work. I, uh, I'm really impressed with... Uh, with your portfolio already, and I'm excited to see where it, where this goes. Uh, Jay, awesome! Uh, I'm I'm so happy that you uh, you and Sean are working together in this. Uh, I think it's going to be great, big deal. You know, um, as far as as far as the platform, honestly, I don't think anyone has anything to lose. Uh, the only thing that you can gain from joining this platform is selling items, and at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do is to sell products. So, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, Jay, my man. You know, I just want to say, uh, you know, there, there are going to be some haters out there, but this bunch of people that I'm having the pleasure of talking with tonight, you guys are rock stars, every single one of you. And uh, it, it's been great working with you, the positivity, the energy, and you guys see the mindset, the future, the, the vision, the dream that we all have here. And it's all about success for everyone. That's really it. You know, if we all get to the same place, whatever path we choose to take there, I'm, I'm going to be happy for everyone. And those who choose to join our team, we've got your back. You know, as, as Scott was saying, if you have a rough month, let us know. We'll give you another one. We're not greedy. We're, we're here to make sure that you make money first. And I even told Sean that when I first came on board to the team, I told him, I don't want to get paid until you get paid. I want to make sure that the company is doing well first. And I even said, you know, when, when I had the opportunity to, to make a few bucks, I said, keep it. Drive it into marketing, drive it into advertising. Let's grow this bad boy out. Let's make this happen. So thank you to everyone for for having me on tonight. And thank you to the, the kind people. And I appreciate the critique too. I appreciate the battle. But thank you to those with the kind words tonight and, and for the wonderful people that hosted me here tonight too. I appreciate it greatly. All right. We'll leave it up to the owner of Prairie Grid. What's going on? What is your words, your, your parting words, my man? I appreciate you coming on, by the way, and answering all of our questions, all of our questions. Yeah, thank you. Anytime. Um, the actually, the honor is all mine. Uh, had I known there were awesome groups like this out there, I would have been on YouTube a long time ago. Once again, um, I've been buried under a rock or in a dark room building a website. Um, you know, I just want everybody to know that. You know, we just we just want a cool. I just want to build a cool platform for everybody to enjoy and to sell. Um, you know, I want people to feel comfortable with the brand and, you know, search me out on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, check me out. Um, just search my name, search me out. I'm in Fargo, North Dakota. Check me out on Facebook if you want. Come like our Facebook page. Um, call me personally. Uh, phone number 701-659-0238. Uh, we're trying to bring, you know, we're trying to treat people the way that uh, we want to be treated and bring the human element back to marketplaces. I'm really um, cognizant of the fact that, you know, as companies grow, then comes the corporate mentality. And I am going to fight fiercely against the corporate men corporate mentality because I'm not a corporate type of guy. Um, mm -hmm. I like to dig in barns and find cool stuff. So uh, 
ultimately, if you're that, if you like to do that and you know, you want a cool place to sell, you know, by all means come to Prairie Grit and don't let anybody tell you that your idea is stupid. Um, just use that as fire or fuel to stay up later to work on your project. Oh yeah. Thanks everybody. No, it means a lot. Um, a lot of great closing stuff. Um, late, uh, lazy picker. If you have any other questions, reach out to them directly. I'm sure they can answer any questions you may have. Um, all I can say is this, um, I'm building my dream. Like if you would have told me last April that I would quit my corporate job and, and sell used clothes, used shoes, used bras, um, I've sold everything, um, everything you guys can think of. Um, I even, yeah, I, I've sold uh, adult magazines. I've gotten storage units. I've sold uh, stuffed animals. Um, I have sold stuff that if you would have told me even, I don't know, 10 years ago that you'd be selling it, I'd call you crazy. So at the end of the day, um, you got to follow what you're interested in, whatever your story is. And I've done over a hundred interviews. Like people don't realize this, but over a hundred interviews of people that's in chat right now that have less than a hundred subscribers on my YouTube channel, we've done an interview. And part of that interview process is the fact that, that somebody has a vision either to create or to do something with, you know, their, their, their business or, you know, them as a person. And uh, yeah, so just keep following your journey, have fun doing it. Um, we only live once uh, the last like few months. I've realized that, you know, it just time flies. Like it was Monday. Now it's Sunday. It was Monday. It was Sunday. And I love it because I get to stare across Scott all day long. And sometimes he talks, he's, he's amazing. Or, or sometimes he's, he's working hard over there or something. I, I try to get him to say what the title is. And I don't think I'm going to be able to, I'm trying to drag this on to see if I can ache him on, but obviously not. Uh, but all I can say guys is have a I, good Sunday. I, I'm going to help you out later. All right, here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> oh, this is what I gotta work with, guys. This go. This is what I gotta work with. Hey, hey wait, wait. Package delivery. Uh, six o'clock. Three o'clock. Package delivery. Thank. Oh, oh, I got a package delivery. Yep. Is it my nose? <laughs> no, no. Your mannequin, dude. Oh, my mannequin. <laughs> oh, yes, guys. Well, we'll take two seconds. I'll tell you why I like this mannequin. Um, what you can do here is you can take off the arms, you know, and, uh, so they're magnetic and so they work really well when you put clothes on. It was so funny when I packaged this up, I had the arms, I did an Instagram post where I had the arms sticking out and, and you could tell people like, what the, and if you carry a mannequin outside your house, uh, people are like, what is that guy up to? Like, what <laughs> is that? Guy? yeah, but these mannequins are really, really cool. Uh, that makes it super easy. But yeah, that being said, love every single one of you guys. Go after your dream like these folks are doing and have an amazing night. Thank you so, so much, Russ. Tony, <sighs> how do I invest in company? Buy a little. That's a secret, buddy. All right, guys. Have an amazing night. See ya. Yeah.